22. Um, so, uh, recently, I'll put this on. Uh, recently, uh, Nintendo, um, oh, right, right, yeah, okay, I just article. Uh, I'm not sure if it was made, specifically made to be public or if it was, uh, leaked, but their presentation of their financial results briefing was, was released. Um, it detailed some of the things that they've, that we already know, but they also detailed, like, uh, specific, uh, numbers as far as, like, how much a game was selling, how many copies it was going for, um, Two of the things that w- that came out out of this, and I'm gonna read the article here that was talked about it. Uh, this comes out of Verity.com, uh, written by Stephanie Fogel. Nintendo Switch online details coming in early May. Uh, Nintendo will share more details about its upcoming online subscription service for Switch in early May. It said during a, a recent financial results briefing, like PlayStation Plus or Xbox Gold, Switch Online locks multiplayer play- uh, gameplay behind a yearly subscription fee. It also comes with its own dedicated smartphone app that provides voice chat and other social functions. It was originally scheduled to launch in late 2017, but before Nintendo decided to delay it. The Nintendo Switch had a great first year. It reportedly sold over 17 million units since its launch in March of 2017. Nintendo predicts that it can do even better in the coming year and sell 20 million more of the hybrid console along with the 100 million games. Uh, once the online service launches in September 2018, it will additionally offer discounts on the Nintendo eShop along with the compilation of retro titles and added online play. A 12-month subscription will cost tw- uh, will cost 20 bucks, with which Nintendo credits a lot cheaper than its competitors. Um, so it got in a little bit detailed as far as that goes, but like it definitely it was listed in here. Um, but it said that there's be more information about the online. Um, the online uh, uh, service and how it's going to function um, during their, I guess, their direct, it's going to be in early May, which is around the corner. So we'll find more information about that because they haven't said anything about that, like, at all. Um, so I'm very curious to see what they detail outside From of... From what I understand, like, and, and again, I briefly looked at it, so correct me if I'm wrong, but... Nintendo is really on the up and up. <laughs> oh yeah, like, like they, they're making they're, they're they're in really good shape right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the the Switch is selling really well. The the the, you know, the fucking DS is still selling well enough. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, no. Games are selling out the ass. Like, I, I sincerely hope that we get, you know, at least two major titles from 360 or for 360. Jesus Christ, <laughs> from the uh, from the, uh, the that are on the Switch uh, every year. Like, I know last year we got lucky with Zelda and Mario, but I'm hoping that this next year we get, you know, Metroid and something else. You know, I... I... So here's the interesting thing that I'm like... And we talked about it briefly in the last segment, but, like, here's the interesting thing that's got me wondering. um, It's it's a continued support for the GDS um, that they have right now. Uh, I would have thought by this time that they were going to stray away from 3DS and just promote the Switch and say, hey, the Switch is, it's both a portable and it's a home console, and we're going to treat it as as both um, and support that and slowly, like, uh, wean away from the 3DS uh, gaming device. I thought that was going to happen, but, like, after reading this, like, they definitely are supporting, they're, they're supporting the 2DS for... Uh, but was it so 2019 or further beyond that? Um, which is interesting, which is very interesting. And I heard talks that um, the reason why for that is because they weren't sure that the, the Nintendo Switch was going to be a success or not. So they were hedging their bets. And just in case that didn't work out, we'll, we'll focus hard on the, on the 3DS. Um, but it turns out to be yeah. not the case. Um, and yeah, with games that are coming up pretty soon, uh, with Dead Heat Breaker, Sushi Striker, which actually looks pretty cool, Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker, Warrior Wear in August, Luigi's Mansion re release uh, this year, and Mario Lu- Lu- and Luigi's uh, Bowser's Inside Story. Um, so they're definitely, it's interesting. It's very interesting that they are definitely uh, going in that direction and supporting the 3DS. Also, not to mention, as I scroll down more on the document, they go into detail regarding their mobile market and how well they're doing. And apparently, like, they've 
they're not doing too bad. Like, Fire Emblem's apparently selling well. Super Mario Run was apparently selling well for them. Um, they're, you know, they're liking what's happening at Animal Crossing. Like, they are in a pretty good spot right now. And it seems like everything they've seemed to touch mostly is turning into gold. It's all coming up millhouse for Nintendo. <laughs> it really is. And it looks like they are also going to be focusing on the mobile aspect as well. So, it's interesting. Because like, they're going mobile with the with the, the, the phone device. They're going with the support on the 3DS because people are still, still have a lot of them and they're still buying them. And you get the Switch at the same time. Um, it all looks good for Nintendo right now. My question is, can they do all three with enough support to keep it going? Um, yes and no. I think they can for a while, but at a certain point, they're going to have to, they're going to either have to come up with a new handheld, which is going to be hard sell mm, right now, or kill yeah, the tough. DS entirely. I would say that they would probably kill the DS entirely before they put out a new console or a new handheld. Because as we've seen in the past, they're not shy to do that type of thing when it came to the uh, NES Mini. Because when that came out, people were getting it or people were craving for it. It was a huge, huge thing. But Nintendo had a limited supply and they only released so much and I don't want to say refuse to make more, but they felt satisfied for what they've sold and made it Super SNES. I'm assuming they make another one of those. So I would not be surprised if they just killed the, the, the 3DS to make a new handheld console or a new handheld altogether. Or push the fo focus on the Switch and saying that it is a handheld and they push more handheld original games on the, on the, uh, on the Switch. So they can go on multiple routes. Uh, yeah. Not to mention, again, the mobile market. <laughs> they can go that, that route too. So it's very interesting to see the fact, the fact that, yes, they are doing very well right now. But in terms of like what they look like in the future, it's all going to depend on what they want to focus on. Um, unless they have the money to support all big major three components to their company and to what their focus is. But at some point, like they're going to have to focus on particularly one or two things for their company. Um and you can have only have so much more manpower to, to do that. So I'm very curious, but this is kind of blew my mind as I look reading through yourself. Like, holy crap, Nintendo. Um, so I think it'll be all right. Yeah. I, th I think they're going to do really well. I, I, I don't think that they know the mistake they made with the Wii, with the Wii and the Wii. U. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they're not going to uh, do that yeah. again. And really, I think that that's ultimately where the problem lies is what they did with that system. So yes, it was, that was a, for them, that was a big, huge misstep. The Wii U is the 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 bastard uh, uh, stepchild that they do not. I don't know that see. I'd say that the Wii U is a really solid console. Oh, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I it think was it's a cool. really hard sell. Yeah, I, don't get me wrong. I got a Wii U. Like there's some there's some good games on it. I want I, I still get to play. But like for Nintendo, they 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 deem it as a failure to them. Like it is they they are straying away as far away as as they can from the Wii U and try well, to not acknowledge it. I think it's more it's more to the fact that they I don't think that they're trying to do that. I think that they're only doing that for the aspect of making it easier for people to um make the choice. Like if a parent goes into the store and wants to get their kid a new Nintendo, they don't want to have parents look at, you know, look, you know have the situation they did with the Wii and the Wii like it doesn't say it's the new console; it just says yeah, Wii U. True. Well, what's yeah. what's the difference? So, yeah, with yeah. the Switch, they were like, "Let's get rid of everything we have in the store right now. Release the Switch, so that way by Christmas, you know, when a kid says, I want the new Nintendo,' parents just go, "Okay, I want the new Nintendo,' and and, and they get it." Like, I think that was more their idea. I really, I really don't think it had anything to do with with uh, what you just said. I I would I would agree. I would, I would agree to that because there are definitely there are definitely times when it comes to parents and older generation as far as like you know being very confused as to like what to get the console and the Wii and Wii U was something where people were confused like is it a attach on is it like an upgrade like what you know there were definitely th those talks so I wouldn't be surprised if that was one of the decisions why they made that mentality of like we're, we're making a new console we're going to switch we're going to 
not talk about the Wii U because we're moving on to the next console and have people focus on that. So I could yeah. definitely see, I could definitely see that for sure. Uh, welcome back, uh, Salvador. All 